Hi everyone, it's Dr. Joyce Park, board certified dermatologist, and I am back today to share my huge skincare haul from the French pharmacies. I went to Paris a couple of weeks ago and I raided City Pharmacy. I bought a ton of skincare. Like my entire desk here is covered with skincare and skincare boxes. And I'm just gonna do a little haul for you guys and a little review and let you know what's worth buying and what's worth skipping. So being a dermatologist, I went a little bit crazy buying sunscreen. Don't even ask me why, because I already have a lot of sunscreen in my closet at home in America will actually do ask me why because you know what there are a lot of more advanced sunscreen filters that are approved in Europe for sale that sadly we don't have access to in the US so I'll get into that a little bit more when I go over the actual UV filters but let's go into the specific sunscreens that I bought first off let's talk about La Roche-Posay this first one this is La Roche-Posay Antelios pigment correct with SPF 50 plus so this one comes with niacinamide, which is an antioxidant, can help with brightening, as well as zinc. The filter for this is actually Mexerol XL, which is a patented lipophilic filter that is owned by L'Oreal. While we're on the topic of Mexerol, I actually wanna take us on a little walk down memory lane to get a little bit of clarity about what Mexerol is and how all of the different forms came about. The first Mexerol to come out was Mexerol SX. This is a photostable, hydrophilic UV chemical filter. This was introduced in 1982. This was really great at blocking short form UVA rays along the range of 320 to 340 nanometers. Then came Mexerol XL, which was introduced in 1989, which is lipophilic, meaning it likes to be dissolved in oil. So those sunscreens tend to have a more oily consistency. And this expanded the range to a little bit more longer UVA ray blockage. Then earlier this year in 2022, UVMune 400 was introduced, which actually expanded the spectrum of UVA blockage by 20 nanometers and therefore is a big deal because we haven't had a new chemical filter in a while and this just improves the level of UVA blockage that much more. This is one of the only sunscreen filters to block long range UVA rays. In the US, we pretty much just have zinc oxide, which as we all know is great, but it can also be kind of white and pasty. Pros and cons. Going back to this product, this product has Mexerol XL. So we do know it's a little bit more of a lipophilic formulation. This one also has Procerad ceramide. So you can think of ceramides as the mortar to your skin cells, which are the bricks. So the ceramides kind of help hold those bricks together. And as we mentioned before, it has niacinamide. It also has cell ox B3 technology, which is an antioxidant and B3 we know is vitamin B3, which is niacinamide. So I just wanna try this for you guys. I'm just gonna like pump it on my hand here. I pumped out way too much. That was way more than I was going for. But I wanted to see what the color of it would be. Oh, wow. Okay, this is definitely not a good match for my skin. Do you see this? It's orange. Oh my God, this is really thick. And my whole hand is now literally orange. There's no way I can actually put this on my face. All right, I am going to wash this off. I mean, I didn't pump out that much. I just put out one small pump, which I typically use two pumps for my face. You could see the color change. That orange, regular skin color. Even though this is a really cool sunscreen filter and really cool technology and has great ingredients, this is gonna be a huge no for me. Like that is just not gonna work. Like if I put this on my face, I'm gonna look like an Oompa Loompa. Hold on, I'm gonna go wash this off real quick. Okay, I'm back. And sadly, I will have to be saying no to that one and gifting it away to someone with a little bit more pigment in their skin than me. All right, next up is the La Roche-Posay Antelios UV Immune 400 SPF 50 Plus Cream. This this UV Mune 400, I talked about it. This is the newest Mexerol to be patented and released this year, 2022, by L'Oreal and only in the La Roche products. This one has the greatest coverage against longer wavelength UVA rays. This is supposed to be the best of the best and very new, gives you wonderful protection. This one also contains something called Netlock technology, where the sunscreen filters are homogeneously and evenly distributed in a film across your face because the filters are 
actually encapsulated in these little gelled oil droplets. So that creates this contiguous film, which helps with the cosmetic application of this product. It also makes it water, sweat, and sand resistant. Aside from the UV Mune 400, there's also seven other chemical sunscreen filters in this formulation, which I will list in this box right here. All in all, there's eight filters together to give you max, max sun protection. This formula also contains glycerin, which is a humectant, which helps you hold on to water in the layers of your skin. So let's go ahead and give this one a try. I'm a little scared after that first one because I went really hard with like two squeezes. So I'm actually, no, I just did one squeeze with that and it was still, it was still a lot. Okay, so here's, I did the one pump. It's already looking kind of thick and kind of orange. So let me just, oh man. Okay, all right, this is better. I would say this is better than the previous one I just did. However, oh man, I wish I bought the non-tinted version because I'm trying to rub it in. I mean, it's orange. It's literally orange. Like I am orange down to here. So it's not a good color match. Aside from that, I would say this one actually rubs in really well. It feels hydrating. It feels lightweight. I love that it gives me such crazy, insanely high protection against UVA and UVB in the full spectrum of the different wavelengths. If it didn't make me look orange, I would like it a lot more. But yeah, I can see a clear delineation here between where the sunscreen starts and where my natural skin color starts. It's probably going to be a no for me. However, just based on skin color alone. If I had more pigment in my skin, I think this would be totally fine. Okay, next up is the La Roche-Posay Antelios XL SPF 50 Plus Sunscreen Spray. The Antelios XL is different from the Antelios technology that's available in the US. The Antelios XL is a blend of Mexerol XS, Mexerol XL, and also Tinosorb S. This one also contains some extra antioxidants, like there's vitamin E, and there's also thermal water. I generally like sunscreen sprays, mainly for the body. If you wanna use it on the face, I always tell my patients don't inhale while you are spraying your face because that increases the risk that you're gonna inhale those sunscreen filters into your lungs. The other trick with sunscreen sprays is make sure you're getting enough on and also to spray it where the wind is not just completely blowing it off. So be mindful of what direction you're facing when you're spraying it on. You wanna get a nice even coating. And these are really convenient also for tops of heads for my bald patients. It can be good for reapplication of our makeup as long as you hold your breath and good for large body surface area application as well. Also great for kiddos. For me kiddos whom it's really hard to get liquid sunscreens on, I like to use spray sunscreens. Again, for kids and faces, you can't make sure that they're holding their breath when you're spraying sunscreen all over their faces. So I generally will advise you to spray the sunscreen into your hands and then use your hands to apply it onto their faces. So let's give this one a try. I'm actually gonna just go ahead, hold my breath and spray this on my face. Here we go. Cause I do have some sunscreen on and I wanna see how this holds up with reapplication over makeup. Okay, I got a lot on, so let's see how it looks. I am glistening. Okay, I think I put too much on, guys. Oh my God, my hair is like drenched. It's a little bit oily and glistening for my taste, but I think that's also just because I sprayed on so much, but it's pretty lightweight. You know, I think this is great and really convenient. And I love that it has a blend of all the Mexerils. <laughs> Give me all the Mexerils. Okay, this is how it looks now after rubbing it in. Looks better, right? I'm actually pretty happy with the spray and how it looks. I think it's a wonderful alternative for sunscreen reapplication throughout your day. Next up is our first non La Roche-Posay review. This one's from Aven. This is the SPF 50 plus Lumiere Blue Light Cream. She says it's very high protection SPF 50 plus. And this one caught my eye because this contains the newest chemical sunscreen filter from Aven, which is called Triasorb. It also contains Uvenol A, which blocks UVA, Uvenol T, which blocks UVB, and also Tinosorb S, which blocks both. It's broad spectrum. The big deal about Triasorb is that it has been shown in studies to be effective at blocking and protecting your skin from blue light. Now we know that visible light is a big deal. There's more and more research coming out that you can get hyperpigmentation or skin darkening from repetitive exposure to blue light, which is the higher energy spectrum that's found within the total visible light spectrum. There's also this fear that you get blue light exposure through your technologies, through your cell phones, your tablets, your computer screens, but actually the dose 
of blue light and visible light that you get from your electronics is much, much, much smaller and very actually minuscule compared to the dose that you're getting from the sun. And so really what you should be protecting against is visible light from the sun in addition to blocking UVA and UVB. Now the triasorb technology has been found to be very effective at both absorbing as well as reflecting visible light across the entire visible light spectrum, but especially against blue and violet light. In in vitro epidermis models, triasor by itself was also found to be able to protect against the production of reactive oxidative species caused by blue light exposure. And these studies also found that when triasorb was combined with tinosorb, which is the other chemical filter in this product, the sunscreens were even more able to protect against DNA damage from reactive oxidative species production through the exposure of blue light. This one is non-tinted, which gives me hope that I will not look like an orange Oompa Loompa. So this one is more yellow in application. I will just show you guys what it looks like. No orange color here. You can see it kind of goes on yellowish. And I find that I am just putting on way too much product when I'm trying to show you what it looks like. This is cool. It goes on really clear actually. No white cast, which I would not expect because this is not a mineral filter. There's no zinc in it. This is what it looks like rubbed in. It's pretty much invisible, which I like. I like that I'm getting great blockage against visible light, against blue light, and that it also gives me greater protection against the UV range as well, which I really enjoy. My main thing with this is, however, that we know that iron oxides are really great at blocking visible light as it is. So in the US, any tinted sunscreen actually contains iron oxide because that's what gives the tinted sunscreen its pigment. I would be curious to see how much triasorb blocks visible light as opposed to straight up iron oxides. This sunscreen is interesting because it's non-tinted, meaning there's no iron oxides in it. However, it still blocks visible light just on the basis of containing triosorb alone. I'm going to do a little bit more digging to see if there's any studies that measure just how much inhibition of DNA damage you get with iron oxide protection versus this triosorb. So I'm going to say this is a real winner for me. I'm really impressed with this. I also randomly picked up this sunscreen stick. This is by La Rose, the stick solaire with SPF 50. And this one contains a blend of three different chemical sunscreen filters that I'm going to list here because they're just too difficult for me to pronounce. And the main ingredient behind this is actually apricot oil. So it's actually a mix of different oils. There's apricot oil, there's sunflower oil, wheat germ oil, candelilla wax, cocoa seed extract for skin softening. And there is a scent to this one. It has a light vanilla scent. Now I know right off the bat, some people are very allergic to fragrance. And so this will not be the product for you. For me personally, I don't hate fragrance. I happen to not be allergic to it. So I actually did end up liking this product. This one I think is good for reapplication of sunscreen over your makeup. This also is great for lips and this would actually be a great sunscreen to use around the eyes because I have a lot of patients who tell me that liquidy or lotioning sunscreens are constantly running into their eyes and giving their eyes a lot of stinging and a lot of pain. And so I tell them to look for a more wax based sunscreen that stays in place. Now, of course, for this one specifically, there's fragrance. So if you happen to have very, very sensitive skin around the eyes, please do not use this product. But again, I don't have sensitive skin. So I'll just show you how I use it. It's like a solid waxy stick here. So I actually just go ahead and put it on. I can put it on around my eyes and not have an issue with it. I can use it for reapplication all over my face. I actually really like how it smells and it's like a super easy reapplication. And it just kind of gives me like a glow. I'm not as oily as I was with that massive spray on sunscreen, but this just gives me like a little slight glow, which I like. To be honest, I like this scent. I think this could be a great one for the face. In France, Aven also has a makeup line, Couvrance, and I just was curious to try this out. I picked up this compact foundation cream in the color 1.0 porcelain. This one is a mattifying foundation and it also contains SPF 30. So I thought this could be a unique kind of makeup, skincare, sunscreen hybrid that accomplishes a lot. It's a multitasker. I thought it could maybe be a an easy way to reapply my sunscreen. The thing about Couvrance is that they specialize in color correction. It is a makeup line, but it's also first and foremost a skincare line because it is 
made by Event, and so they can color correct any of your imperfections like red blemishes, dark spots. This one in particular contains hydrogenated isobutene, which helps to give some sort of emollient effects. It also helps to prevent water loss, so that can be a little bit of an extra bonus to this. The one thing I noticed from reading the ingredient list though is that the SPF is mainly given through titanium dioxide. That's the only sunscreen ingredient in this product. And while titanium dioxide is a great mineral sunscreen, it doesn't provide coverage or blockage against the longer range UV rays. So we're talking the higher nanometer range, like the 380 to 400 range, that is most effectively blocked in terms of mineral sunscreen filters by zinc. But this kind of gave me a little bit of pause. I don't love using titanium only sunscreen formulas because I just don't think I'm getting that great coverage and blockage against the higher wavelength UVA range. But anyways, I was curious to try this out too because I am obsessed, obsessed with the Amore Pacific CC Cushion Compact with the little sponge applicator. It's just such a wonderful way to reapply foundation plus get SPF, obviously not relying on that alone, but this one comes with this sponge. I've already tried to use this before, testing it out. I already tried to use this before filming this video. The foundation itself is a little bit more firm. It's not like something you press. You actually have to kind of like put pressure on it. Okay, right off the bat, I can tell it's a little bit stickier. So I'll do half my face. How about that? I'll do half my face and you guys can compare it to the other half. You can definitely tell that I have it only on one half of my face. It doesn't look half bad in the camera for some reason. The color just looks a little bit artificial to me. It's very light. So I'm more yellow on this side and I am just like white, white on this side. But I would say, you know, this is one that might look good on camera, but it's definitely too heavy for me to use in my day-to-day -day life. I don't like makeup that looks too heavy. And this one's definitely like full coverage. Like it's covering all my freckles. It's even covering this huge, massive mosquito bite that I got in New York this week. So it's, you know, it's working hard, but I don't like that it's a little bit cakey. It actually highlights some of my dry skin. If you really like high coverage makeup and if you get the right color, this might be a good option for you, but I prefer a lighter coverage look, less cakiness. This probably wouldn't be my first choice. I'd probably stick to my Amore Pacific CC cream. Okay, that was only the sunscreens and I have a ton more products to go through. So I think I'm gonna save that for a part two of a Parisian pharmacy skincare haul. As a teaser, other things I have to review are the Biafine, the A313. I also have some NYX products to review like this one. Also this one, the Yaluset Hyaluronic Acid Cream. So that's just a teaser of what's to come. So that will be uploaded maybe next week. But for now, I have like so much sunscreen on me. So much sunscreen, I have makeup on like half my face. So I'm gonna go fix this situation. But if you liked this video, please like, comment, or make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on part two where I go over even more of my Parisian pharmacy skincare finds. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.